I mentioned at DARPA one of the things you did, which I think probably is better described as science fiction to me. But it's the whole idea of taking a prosthetic arm and allowing the brain to actually mm -hmm. move it and manipulate it. It's magical, actually. It's really magical when you see a patient do that. But let me bring you back. The question when I came home from the war was, it's not what could we do or what's possible, but what do we really want? So if you go to one of these young soldiers who's lost their arm or their leg, what do you want? Forget the other stuff. I want my arm. And I said, well, you can't have your arm because it's gone. Well, now I want an arm like Luke Skywalker has. That's what they want. So you know what? Let's give them what they want. Let the challenge be not what is possible, not what is probable, what is it that you really want? They want an arm that looks like an arm. They want an arm that feels like an arm. They want to be able to touch something like they do with the arm. And, and very important, very, very important, they want to control it the way they control their arm. Sure. You think yeah. to move your arm, you move your arm. Your brain does that. So the only way to do that is you've got to find some way to measure the brain signals that said, move my arm, mm -hmm. and then put them into this arm so it will move. All I need is a group of neuroscientists and a group of engineers. And I tell them what I want. So what I did was I took a hard problem, but I bounded it, right? So we had Dean Kamen, the famous guy who invented the Segway, right? He said, I can build you that arm. No problem. Put me in, coach. And he did. And he did it in the, in the two years. Absolutely, he did it. Then I found another group at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. And they said, put me in, coach. You know, we built the space shuttle. We can do this. Hey, what is this, right? And put me in, coach. And they did it. And who was the first human arm? What we did was we went to people who are quadriplegic. But the group at Pitt, you know, led by Andy Schwartz and Mike Boninger, they got the first patient. They implanted the first patient with a thing. And they, sh they demonstrated very quickly that this could happen. And it was remarkable. That video will make you cry because they hooked him up. Yeah. And I said, I want you to hook this thing up. And I want you to get this patient, Tim, to move his arm. And I want you to film it. So I clicked it on. And, and all they said was, can you move the hand up? And he goes, up, down, left, right. And his, the guy's girlfriend started to cry. She couldn't believe it. And she went up and she said, put her hand out and says, touch my hand. And yeah. it completely broke protocol. Reached out, touched her hand. And she goes, he held my hand. He didn't hold her hand. That, that was, was a robot that was, arm. That was a 60 minutes. Right. That was a robot arm. But the beauty of it was, it's the way he interacted with it and the way she interacted with it. And then at that moment, it became that epiphany moment, right, of who we are as people. Our arms are just appendages, right? It's our brains that control all this stuff. That's what the magic of the brain is.